Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show. It's live. If you have any question or comment, send them to us on the WhatsApp number on the screen. And of course, if you are watching on social media, feel free to join the conversation. Let's keep it clean. Big, big, big topic today. After over 10 or so days of betting, one question keeps coming up tonight. We're going to pursue that question for you. It's a question about the COVID-19 test that's done at the airport and how the contract was signed, who is responsible, and whether the test is cost-effective or not. I have two interesting people as my guests to join me to discuss this. And of course, in the last quarter hour, we bring you a summary of the vetting with some highlights and some interesting voices. Stay tuned. Energy drink keeps you going. Available in major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to The Point of View. So tonight, I have two people. I call the first one the questioner-in-chief on this issue of the COVID test because of all the, I think, 11 or so nominees who have shown up. He's asked about five of them the self-same question. Is the MP for uh, Nortong, Honorable Samuel Okuja Tuablakwa. Thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Bernard. It's good to have you. Hope you are fine. Well, how about you? Good to see you. Great, I'm well. We also have the immediate past Deputy Minister of Health, former MP for Lejokuku, Honorable Bernard Okoboy. Good evening, Bernard. Bernardino. <laughs> Hope you are well. Thank you for having me. I'm good. Great. And Be greetings to my senior dad here. <laughs> Very important. Hi, good evening, Doc. I'm about two, two senior dad here. <laughs> it's, it's, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an all or daddy or... All of that affair, okay. and, uh, and 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 I must say that uh, Doc, we are missing you in Parliament. Fair uh, enough. Okay, gentlemen, before I come to you, I need to tell my story. So I'm going to move to the screen, and I'm going to just walk uh, viewers quickly through what, what we are talking about. So we're talking about what I call the Frontiers Healthcare Saga. It's a saga, and I'll prove it briefly. So don't forget that on August 30, the president announced that beginning September 1, when our borders open, there will be tests done for people coming into the country. And therefore, all passengers coming into the airport would have to pay $150 for a test, a PCR test, which would be ready in half an hour. Now, we are told that Frontier Healthcare Services was chosen to write this testing. Now, we are told this company was chosen by the Ghana Airports Company. And Okoboy will tell us more about this. We did some digging and found out that the company was incorporated in June 2020, owned by another company with a rather long name, HSSL. And then, of course, that company is also owned by another company, which is somewhere in Dominica. And Dominica is in the Caribbean, so it's a supposed tax haven. So that's some of the information we found on this so far. Now, the other information is that on October 2020, October 22nd, I think, the minority in parliament led by Kwabna Minta Akando raised a lot of red flags. They basically said the agreement was opaque. They, they claimed there were breaches in the procurement laws of Ghana. 
and lack of transparency in the award of the contract to uh, this company called Frontiers Health Ghana, which was incorporated in um, June of the, the same year. Then a couple of new developments. Last month, January 31, President decides or announces a reduction in the cost of COVID testing from 150 to $50 for ECOWAS nationals. So this came into effect a week after the announcement. Then we had the vetting come in from the day or few, uh, two after that. Now, this issue has come up repeatedly at vetting. So it started when the first person to be vetted, Kwekwa Jimamenu, appeared before the vetting committee. He was the first person to be vetted. And um, I'll show you a quick excerpt of his vetting. Then when the foreign minister also showed up for vetting, this issue came up. Then when the attorney general nominee came up for vetting, the issue showed up again. Now today, when the minister nominee for gender, who used to be the minister for procurement, showed up, the issue came up again. I'll explain why these two men are on this slide. But I just want to show you an excerpt of the exchange or the interaction between the minority chief with Mubarak Muntaka and Honorable Kwekwa Jimamenu on this issue. Earlier in your answer to the Frontier Health Care Services Limited at the Kotoka International Airport, did I hear you say that that services was procured by the Presidential Tax Force on COVID? Yes, I did say so. Are you a member of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID? Yes. So if you are a member of the Presidential Tax Force and you were going through this contract, are you saying that you didn't know the details of the contract that was being given out or that was being done? Honorable Chair, the Presidential Task Force was actually started by me from the Ministry. The early stages of the but of the um, onslaught. I said I was creating an interministerial committee. But then the first two meetings I called, my colleagues wouldn't come. So I told the president that he should take over that interministerial committee to enable us to engage. And that created the presidential task force. Okay. Then the task force is a very large thing. I, I don't dispute that. I mean, whilst the, I'm coming, the task I'm force was going to embark on an health We had project. separate functions for separate groupings and committees within the task force. And are you telling right. this and committee? And there was created uh, a, a Our minister, if you let us have a conversation that uh, those listening to us and we in the committee can follow, it will be useful. And you are telling this committee that as a minister for health then, and they were procuring a health service at the, app, at the airport. You were not in the known. Yes. Is the presidential tax force on COVID an entity? Where entity means? Where they can procure. Because you know it's only an entity that can procure. You are, you've been the former chair of the Public Accounts Committee. No. So how did they procure if they were not an entity? They did that in collaboration with Ghana Health Service. So are you then suggesting that it was Ghana Health Service that, that front the procurement of this service at the airport? To interrogate that matter. When you say you interrogate, what does that mean? I'm not very privy to the initial stages of procurement. When I got, um, they finished arrangements with it and they came to my notice. I was more interested in getting the facility set up and providing port health officials to man the facility. That is when I came in. I didn't go back to interrogate these matters to the extent that you want me to answer. And that is why I'm saying that I have to get back to interrogate. Okay, earlier you also said that this group didn't even have a line, so you have to encourage them to go and register, is that right? Yeah, so when they were registering, did you bother to find out their nationality? No, please. And after subsequently, when they were operating and there was a lot of press conferences and... So that was uh, Moon Taka's questioning of Kwekwa um, Jimamino. Now, within, before that interaction, there had been a question by Ablakwa and 
I, of course, there was also Harun Idrisu's question, but we just decided to just bring the Muntaka one more comprehensive. So we learned a couple of things from there that he was not really in the know about the contract, okay? Now, up next, Shela Yokobochwe. Why is the foreign minister important? This is the airport we're talking about, okay? These are people coming in. We're dealing with immigration issues, okay? So you're going to do a test for people to come into the country. Now, let's hear quickly the question that was posed to her and what she said about this particular issue. I was not consulted. However, what I know, and I wasn't consulted with regards to um, how much is charged at the airport, but I know that at ECOWAS, a decision was taken for ECOWAS citizens throughout all the 15 uh, member states to only have the financial burden of any test, COVID-19 test of $50. And I think it is okay. And reason why I say that is for those who, and I give the example of, of, of um, Europe, there are some charges that are less for those in the Eurozone, the, uh, for, uh, those uh, in the Eurozone, and then those outside. And it's done everywhere. I'm sure for SADC, they have some charges that are uniform within SADC, and yet the same uh, service, uh, the charges are higher. So at least that's a start. It's something that if we so wish, as a, a continental body, AU might also look at it. So that was uh, Honorable Shalaya Kobuchi, Foreign Minister nominee. So Health Minister has been questioned on this extensively. Honorable Yakobuchi questioned. She didn't know how much, how the cost was arrived at, but she has an understanding of some protocols around international issues and stuff like this. Then Godfrey Dami comes in, dashing, very erudite, was vetted for six hours, 20 minutes. And guess what? This issue found its way into his vetting. The matter I have been probing since this hearings began. Airport testing antigen test by Frontier Healthcare Services. So far, my expedition has been quite tortuous and eventful. The health minister tells me he has no idea. He has incited the agreement. The foreign minister designated told us yesterday she was not consulted. You were in the Attorney General's Department. Article 881 makes you the principal legal advisor to government. Are you aware of this transaction? Did you, did you prefer any legal advice to this transaction? The I was not a principal legal advisor to the government. I was deputy attorney general. And my lord, Mr. Chairman, the, the chairman, the duties of a deputy attorney general or a deputy minister is to assist the minister on matters that are assigned. The chairman, I'm not in a position to tell whether indeed it was referred to the Mr. Attorney General. Even this afternoon, I've indicated that the Japan transaction, even though I've spoken about it extensively. I was not the one who worked on it. I was not, because the attorney general assigns work as and how is necessary. A, 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 a follow up on that. It appears my tortuous expedition continues. Uh, he, fortunately, you were wearing two hats. So if I can't get you with legal principal advice, you served on the governing body of the Public Procurement Authority. Did that? transaction come to the board's attention? Mr. Chairman, readily, on the top of my head, I, because there are hundreds of approvals that are taken by the PPA every week, hundreds of them. So I cannot tell whether this particular one. And most of the time, because I'm deputy attorney general, coupling with court, when they are sitting around 10 a.m., I may still be, I will be in court. I will not be there. So Godfrey Dami, the Attorney General nominee, Deputy Attorney General, also does not know the contract didn't come to his attention. 
So he's also out of the picture. Just bear with me. I'll bring Adra Safu in. She is the, at the time, Minister for Procurement. And don't forget, there was a lot of brouhaha about sole source procurement and lack of all the processes. And she, we are told, has a, an expertise in procurement. That ministry was created for her. So guess what? Today she appeared to answer questions to be considered for Minister for uh, Gender, Children and Social Protection. And Opana asked the question again. We have been on a campaign to find out details on the procurement processes leading to the airport $150 antigen test by Frontiers Healthcare Services Limited. Do you know the procurement processes involved and have you cited a contract so far as that airport antigen test con agreement is concerned? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, no, I haven't. You, you haven't seen the contract and you don't know the procurement processes to that, that, that was used as the chief procurement advisor to the president. Mr. Chair, as chief procurement advisor to the president, I want to state on record that the Public Procurement Act at 663 of 2003 was not changed during my tenure as Minister of State for Public Procurement. So the supervisory minister, which is clearly stated in the law, is the Minister for Finance. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Honorable Sarah Jasafo. So the contract didn't come to her notice, and she, but she made an interesting point that based on Act 663, this ministry, headed by Mr. Kenofrata, should be responsible. I added uh, Albert Kandapa because when uh, Ajimamin was asked the question about who or which body procured the services of um, Frontier, said it was the task force, the anti COVID task force that the president put in place. So let me just show you quickly who these people are, then I'll go into the interview segment. President is on a task force, vice on a task force, Dr. Asamoa Ba, Befi Asamoa Ba is there, Dr. Ansian Sarifoma, Director of Ghana Health Services is there, Health Minister is there, Security, Interior, Professor William Pofu of Noguchi. We'll come back to Noguchi. So let me go to Honorable Ablakwa and start with him on his tortuous journey. Uh, Honorable, thanks for, for, for staying. So, wh what is, why are you, what are you looking for? Yeah, so, uh, Bernard, you know that we are in the midst of a pandemic and uh, uh, government procurement has come up uh, for scrutiny. There's a big scandal in the United Kingdom as we speak and uh, many other jurisdictions about uh, government procurement, uh, shenanigans, lack of transparency, opacity, and all of that. And we are talking about a pandemic that has killed so many people as we speak. Uh, more than 2.4 million people in this world have died. Uh, in Ghana, you know, we've crossed the, the, the 500 threshold, which we all dreaded. And, and so you are looking at uh, not only procurement issues, you are also looking at compliance, you are looking at quality assurance. You want to be sure that the systems that have been put in place indeed work, that it is efficacious and that we are not going to have uh, a system that is not reliable. Already, Noguchi, the WACIP uh, uh, scientists are telling us that the UK's variant appears to now be dominating the Ghanaian COVID uh, 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 case count. So you ask the question, are we sure that the systems we've put in place at the airport is reliable, it, 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 it is helping us, it is, is trusted. Now, how do you understand all of these matters and be assured that indeed you have put in place the right system? It is by going through the right procedure, making sure that the systems have been followed.
because the laws have not just been made uh, for decoration. The laws have been made to protect us so that we will be safe, so that all of us can be assured that even if we have to pay so much money, because the $150 we are talking about is among the highest in the, in the world. I mean, I, I read a statement in parliament uh, uh, about a month ago calling for a reduction of, of, of even the, the, what I call punitive and exorbitant $150. Because if you compare our antigen test cost to Malawi, Malawi is charging $25, Malaysia $28, India, the Goa airport is $28. The Via Savarkar International Airport is charging $7. UK uh, Heathrow Airport is $70. And that's for antigen tests. Antigen, as you know, is, uh, is, 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 for want of a better word, inferior to the PCR test. So uh, it's, it's cheaper. If you even compare PCR tests in other jurisdictions, Togo is charging $80 for a PCR test. Sierra Leone is charging $80 for a PCR test. Senegal is charging $75 for a PCR test. Rwanda, $60. Djibouti, $28. Germany, $70. Turkey, $16. And these are PCR tests which are more uh, expensive. So you are paying so much. And you ask the question, are we getting value for money? We have been asking in parliament since we heard about this whole this whole arrangement and by the way uh bernard let me point out that the uh, initial work you did i have here the incorporation document the company was incorporated in july 21st july not june uh, as your uh, production uh, team pointed out it is is 21st july 2020 and the registration number is cs11409 nine two zero two zero now it is significant to observe that the airport had been closed on march 22nd 2020 the president announced in august that the airport will be open on the 1st of september somebody hurriedly set up a company on the 21st of july 2020 had absolutely no track record we have checked frontiers healthcare services limited had absolutely no track record, no uh, biomedical testing facility anywhere in Ghana or any, in any part of the world for that matter. So it raises issues of track record, credibility, and all of that. So, so that is one. The second point is that the, the Procurement Act is clear in Section 40, Act 663, about procedures that should be followed in in, 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 in such periods, periods of, 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 of emergency, if you look at section 41C, it says a procurement entity may engage in single source procurement under section 41 with the approval of the board. C, where owing to a catastrophic event, there is an urgent need for the goods, works, or technical services, making it impractical to use other methods of procurement because of the time involved in using those methods. So we have checked Act 663 was not followed. You listen to the health minister who we first quizzed on this matter, who initially suggested that it was the presidential tax force that did the, the, the procurement. When we pointed out to him that the presidential tax force is not a procurement entity, then he said, okay, they worked together with the Ghana Health Service. You heard him say that. Now, we are hearing <laughs> different entities. I have heard Dr. Koboy, my good friend, say that it was probably the Ghana Airport Company Limited. That is contradicting the health minister who spoke under oath. Now, the other significant point to point out, uh, Bernard, is that we have a fees and charges miscellaneous provisions Act 2018, Act 983, which is the other law which has been sidestepped in this matter, where section three of this, of this Act 983 is clear that you cannot levy the general public without coming to parliament for an approval laying an error. Act 983 has been grossly violated in this matter. The other law which is, is, is also in breach is the Health Institutions and Facilities Act 2011, Act 829. And if I can read uh, section 11 of this, of this act, which is very, very clear. It says that facilities to be licensed, 11.1, 1, 
A person shall not operate a facility unless the facility is licensed under this act. Two, a person shall not operate equipment in a facility specified in the first schedule unless the facility in which the person operates is licensed under this act. If you come to the first schedule of this uh, Health Institution and Facilities Act 2011, facilities to be licensed, you see the item numbered I, clinical and biomedical laboratory, which is what this testing facility at the airport comes under. It is clear that you cannot operate a health facility, a biomedical laboratory facility without prior approval from the health facilities regulatory agency. Our checks have revealed that this Frontiers Healthcare Services Limited operated from the 1st of September, the whole of September, the whole of October. It was not until the 3rd of November 2020. And you had the health minister at the appointments committee say that when he it was brought to his attention that the company had not been licensed, he then helped them to get a license. I have a copy of the license here. They obtained the license on the 3rd of November 2020. So they had operated the whole of, of September, the whole of October without without license. Okay. And we are talking All about right. biodata. Human lives are at stake. Okay. How sure are we that throughout that period they were even doing the right thing? Thank you. And, you've you've and, raised and you asked that look, you asked a, a, Hello. A, a, an important question. We have institutions in this country. No Gucci could have done this. No you problem. have uh, medical All right. you've you've uh, raised a lot of points. I, I want I want to bring Okoboy in. Let's just summarize. So you've raised cost issues, which has been debated. You've raised track record of frontiers. You've raised the Procurement Law Act 663. You've also raised Act 983 on levies and then the Health Facilities Licensing uh, LI as well. So five issues. Honorable Okoboy, thank you for joining the program. Which of these five are you going to deal with? immediately because I, I i don't want to just bundle everything together so yeah. what are you going to start with in terms of your response all right so first of all the in terms of the procuring and uh, the procuring entity uh, my senior mentioned that the minister said it was the COVID task force by way of education not necessarily to him but to the, your viewers the COVID task force is made up of individuals representing ministries and institutions that are key to our fight for COVID. So let's say the controller, head of immigration is on, the interior minister is on, chief of staff is on, the chairperson is the president, I am on, the director general of Ghana Air Service is on it, the health minister is on it. So basically, even the MD for Ghana Airport is also on it, the FDA boss is on it, Professor Ampofo from Noguchi is on it. So it's, it's bringing all competencies together to fight the pandemic. Now, we do a lot of things, but let me speak to the testing at the airport. So what happens is that at any time that we have to uh, do some intervention or, or do a restriction, we, we of, it takes normally as a government agency that would undertake it. But the general principles or ingredients that must be captured are discussed by the task force. So with this testing, what happened was that we came to a point where we wanted to open the airports and we set some parameters. The task force agreed that one, we needed someone with a solution that would uh, identify the virus. So we need an antigen test. And when we say antigen test, a PCR test is a form of antigen test. Any test that identifies the virus itself and not antibodies is referred to as an antigen test. So we wanted an antigen test. Then two, we also wanted a test that would take not more than 30 minutes so that you don't have congestion at the airport or people having to wait overnight for the results. We also wanted one that was as sensitive as a PCR. So we use the PC as the benchmark. So the sensitivity or reliability must be very high. I mean, between 99 to 100%. Okay, you don't have 100% in science. So let's say 90, 99%. So all these ingredients were mentioned. And then, they, like I mentioned on another platform, the Ghana Airport Company Limited, which was the public agency that was going to supervise the execution, was supposed to make sure that they found us a solutions provider who could meet all these ingredients. Now, some of the items that uh, my senior has mentioned, let me address them uh, one by one. First of all, the issue with, of track record and credibility. We wanted a solution. And uh, Ghana Airport Company Limited brought Frontiers and said they had all the ingredients met. We didn't go to sleep when they said that. The FDA was asked to verify their equipments together with Professor Ampovo from Noguchi, 
for them to do clinical trials to confirm that the sensitivity was as high as a PCR. That was done. Secondly, the, the task force also re, re, uh, insisted that all those who were going to work with Frontier at the airport must be people who have been licensed by the Allied Health Council in Ghana and our laboratory uh, technicians who are licensed to operate in Ghana. So those were the two things. Thirdly, the FDA had to go to the airport to ensure that the infrastructure that was going to be put in place was compliant and met all the conditions. Now, so these things were done. Well, someone can say that they were registered just a month or so, and they got the contract. But we at the task force were interested in the ingredients that would assure quality and delivery. Fees and charges. I mean, my senior was in parliament before I came, but I know that we don't determine the fees that Medilab or any private lab charges. Remember, it's not Ghana Airport Company that is undertaking the test. It is a private company or a solutions provider that is operating at the airport that is undertaking. So I stand to be corrected. If Kolebu wants to make some charges, I knew when I was board chairman there that we have to go to parliament. But I don't think that that law applies to a, a private uh, solutions provider. Now, um, HIFRA, I'll, I'll bring in the HIFRA bit, but just to also mention that um, in terms of the, the cost, Maybe I'll address cost and then address HIFRA. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, I think, let, let me handle the Act 829, which is the HIFRA bill. Mm -hmm. Now, even if Nyaho, Nyaho, uh, Nyaho is a known um, health uh, delivery organization, um, Medilab or um, MD Lancet is a known laboratory operator, even if Medilab wanted to operate at the airport, you still needed HIFRA to go and certify the premises. HIFRA validates the premises. So you can't say that you are HIFRA licensed at as um, MD Lancet at East Legon, so automatically you can operate at the airport. So the point I want to make is that when they set up the infrastructure, there was the option of waiting for HIFRA to complete its process before they will even open the airport for them to provide the solution. The other aspect, aspect also had to do with time. That, I mean, there were many losses that were being incurred by the country in many areas because of the closure of the airport. So once the two key ingredients had been satisfied, they could start the operations as concurrently the process is activated. And what I mean, I mentioned the two key ingredients. The ingredients had to do with the, the equipment over there validated by FDA, and then also the staff there who had been licensed by Allied Health. So in terms of whether it was very fatal to allow the two to run concurrently, and not wait maybe a month, two or three for HIFRA, HIFRA to finish. I will not be the judge in that. But just to let uh, the task force was interested in the ingredients that would guarantee the quality okay. and safety of patients. And then with the cost aspect, respectfully, um, um, Bernard, we had an arrangement that was supposed to help Ghana reduce importation of the virus. The arrangement was that you had to pay for two weeks of hotel bills before you even join your flight. And when you get into this country, we were going to let you do two tests. In fact, um, we were doing the test before we brought this mandatory paying of the hotel bills. So basically, you have to spend an average of $1,000 to get a hotel paid for two weeks. This was our arrangement. Now, what the solutions provider said when we tried to ask for a drop in the cost was that you are trying to achieve something by putting in an intervention that requires a $1,000 minimum. I have given you a solution that allows your passengers to pass through, not to go and wait and pay 1,000, and not to be delayed for two weeks before entering the population. And I'm asking for 150 USD. So at the end of the day, either you take my solution, or more or less you can wait the extra three, six months to look for someone who will meet your ingredients. So I think we should also appreciate the fact that we didn't, some of us who had opportunity to challenge the price, did not just take it and go to sleep, but there was the issue of having met ingredients mm. and also compared to okay. the current arrangement that we have. There, there are a couple of questions coming up, but I'll take a short break and come back to both of you. This is the point of view. We are trying to get to the bottom of this frontier health care contract, uh, which we understand nobody really wants to sort of own up based on some of the questions that have come up. They're betting guests, some of the local Blackwa, and um, of course, Bernardo Koboy will be right back with more. Stay with us.
let's take a moment to talk about money. Life can get a little pricey out there. The passing pleasure of a restaurant meal. A fleeting fast food feast. Or those sports magazines you never really finish. But what if you got to watch the big game rather than read about it? And what if that lasted a lot longer? Well, with DSTV, it can. Because with a whole range of different package options to choose from, you can get a whole month's worth of moments for both you and your family at a price you can afford. I am so excited. That's right. Only one in exchange for hours of sport, lifestyle, love is a game of cat and mouse, international, local, and kids' entertainment. Let the nerds take over. It's your moment to enjoy all the moments with DSTV. Good Day Energy Drink keeps you going. Available in major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the point of view. Tonight we're trying to find out more about this frontline or frontiers healthcare service contract and matters arising. Guest Okujetua Blakwa, Honorable MP for North Town, Okoboy, former MP for Lejokuku, and Deputy Minister of Health, former. All right, Honorable Okoboy, I just had a, a quick question for you there in terms of your, your responses so far. So you're saying that even though it's the Ghana Airport Company that did the procurement, to the extent that the chief, the chief executive of the Ghana Airport yes. Company is on the task force, yeah. it's not really a different point you're making from what your former boss tried to say. It was probably just a, a question of emphasis. Is that what you are, you are trying to say? Because so, so, he, uh -huh. yeah. so uh, let me just give you a classical example, then you appreciate it. So if the task force decides that um, we should increase security at our borders, and that we have to find a way to do that. The one who actually operationalizes it is the head of immigration. So we don't determine the number of men he has to use or the strategy, but he must bring back a report that shows that he has tightened the borders. And the same way, if we ask that protocols be enforced, the IGP has to come back and tell us how he's doing it. So the task force sets the ingredients that ought to be met. And um, um, my senior Sami mentioned Noguchi. Remember, all, we've done close to 800,000 tests in this country. Majority of them are being either done directly by Noguchi or being coordinated super and supervised by Noguchi, even in other regions. Okay, on, on that Noguchi. point, on, on that point, yeah. Oko, what yeah. value is Frontiers bringing? Because we are reliably informed that a lot of the work was done by Noguchi staff and that yeah. the Frontiers people are just supervising and that most of the people doing the test at the airport are our own people. And somebody's asking, why not give the money that they are earning to Noguchi? If, if Noguchi has set this up, why do you bring a company to just bring supervisors to use our own people to be working in our own airport? What value are they bringing? Yeah, Bernard, um, Rwanda does PCR test at the airport. When you do the PCR, you have to go into a hotel for 24 to 48 hours to get the results. The PCR technology that Noguchi has cannot give you results in less than half an hour. And 
there are two things you have to consider here. Noguchi is the one that is handling majority of all our cases already. And by the way, Noguchi is a research institution. They are not a service delivery institution. We fall on them when we are dealing with viruses for which technology we don't have. So number one, the one who deployed the technology is Frontiers. The one who invested in the infrastructure and the technology is Frontiers. Noguchi came in in terms of certification of sensitivity and in terms of virology. They, they, they did some work with them in terms of capacity training, which they, they do even for some of the private labs that are operating in Ghana now who are also doing COVID testing. So that is, we have to be careful not to mix it. Noguchi does capacity training, but the technology was not deployed by Noguchi. Noguchi has not got the the say the immuno uh, how do you call it? the immuno solvent assay technology that um, Frontiers is using. So and so so Frontiers, so, just to be clear, Frontiers, even though they didn't have a track record in doing tests at the airport, have the quote unquote technology. So what is that technology? Yeah, the technology is the the, the fluorescent immuno assay. That's the the type of antigen test that can identify the virus and give you results in less than half an hour. And by the way, um, 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 how do you call it, uh, Bernard, their technology is a point of service uh, uh, technology or um, delivery, which has been modeled specifically for airports, designed for airports. And that's why they're able to deploy it in such a way that it does not even impede with the waiting time someone spends okay. at the airport by the time they get out. So really, it's about the solution that they are provided, and there's a cost to it. Okay. And I always say that respectfully, the private labs that are even doing COVID tests in Ghana, we are not determining their prices. The task force did not determine price. Of course, there were we made inputs in trying to get the prices down, like mm. I mentioned. Okay. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it came to having the solution and then um, deciding whether to let go of the solution because of the Thank price. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Blackwa, would you accept the explanation of Ghana Airport Company as entity instead of the committee or COVID response team, and also the fact that even though the committee doesn't have a track record, they have the technology. Well, so listening to my good brother, Dr. Koboy, there's a fundamental issue about the mindset of government during a pandemic. During a pandemic, your mindset must be humanitarian and not uh, commercial. You listen to them, it's, you know, they brought a solution, you will have spent this number of days at the airport or, or, or at the hotel, and so if you'll have paid so much. So, so there's a profiteering mindset for private commercial interest during a pandemic, and that is fundamentally wrong. As I speak to you, a country like Italy, their government decided that they will just subsidize fully so their antigen test is free at the airport. You see, you, you must have a humanitarian mindset in these times. Now, the business about the solution that the Frontiers Healthcare Services, that has, that has absolutely no track record. That solution is available on the shelves. Government could have bought it. This was a golden opportunity to support Noguchi to even build capacity. If it is the case that uh, Noguchi did not have this solution, the solution is available on the shelves. Buy it for Noguchi. We had approved so much money in parliament, billions of dollars from World Bank, from a stabilization fund, from IMF. We could have used this as a good. Already, Noguchi, they are the real heroes in fighting this pandemic. How with limited resources, constraints that are adios, they were able to still test, to track, to trace, and bring us this far. This was a golden opportunity to assist them. And I tell you that IGF paying far less than even $40. Over a few weeks, they will have even got the money back. Government could have uh, recouped whatever investment it makes in Ninoguchi. So the whole framework, the whole model is wrong. It was based on a mindset of profiteering and, okay. and that's where we take issue number two the point must be stressed that this whole business of ghana airport company limited the the mere fact that you say that look all these institutions are represented in a tax force 
the health minister, who is a member of the task force, must know why has this become the world's biggest secret, a mystery? Why? Why is it that the health minister will tell us presidential task force health service, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, the uh, the, the uh, uh, Honorable Godfrey Damney, who serves on the, the board of the, the governing board of the uh, PPA, says he has not cited the contract. He doesn't know that chief procurement advisor to the president, the Honorable Adjoseph, who says, no, I don't, it's, it's become like a plague. Nobody wants to go near. Everybody is fleeing. Why? If it's Ghana Airport Company, no problem. Let's know how the procurement process was done. Okay, but Honorable, produce, see, produce I, I, I just the contract. Point, just Let's finally. see it. Let's know what the terms are. I just have pointed out that finance ministry is the one that oversight. Should, should I guess that if Honorable Ken comes to vetting, probably in a couple of weeks, you are going to repeat this question to him? Absolutely. I mean, we will keep repeating this question. We have asked in Parliament, let us have the contract by law. We carry out oversight. We must know what is going on. Everybody is running away. Yeah. I mean, okay. if, if you say Ghana, if you say if you say that Ghana Airport Company, that will come under aviation. Uh, now the, the president has realigned. So the minister for transport, when he comes, you ask him again. when he when he appears before the appointment committee, we will ask him. Fair enough. I, I mean, Fair enough. Thank you. I mean, we, we, we I, I, your point answers. is well made. Let what, me just take. Is, let me take I a don't final know if Dr. response. Okoboy has, has a contract, if he can share with us. L let me just yeah. take a final comment from Okoboy as we wrap this up. Honorable Okoboy, what's your final comment on yeah. this? Yeah. But if you pose the question to 10, 15 ministers who are not having direct supervisory role over the contract, they will not know. So the fact that people are coming from foreign jurisdiction doesn't mean that the foreign affairs minister will know. Kofi Ada, who was a sector minister, knew everything about this contract. I'm reliably informed that the transport minister who now supervises the Ghana Airport Company Limited has been sufficiently briefed. So this is not couched in mystery. Yes, I appreciate that my boss maybe might not have been adequately briefed on it. So that was the issue. Ajwa Safo has told us she only does policy. She doesn't get involved. I was board chairman for Kolibu Teacher Hospital. There are many contracts that are given at Kolibu. They don't go to AG. So uh, uh, Sami knows better than me. There are some kind of arrangements that you need. So if a Siama comes tomorrow or whenever, he will, he will know. Honorable Siama will know. Yes. And, and Bernard, please let me learn. We never went into this, how do you call it, arrangement at the airport with a, a profiteering mind. We wanted a solution that can help us identify those who have the virus in the shortest possible time. Okay. Just yesterday, Bernard, just yesterday, the Secretary for Health in the UK announced that UK citizens and those from Ireland who have been to red countries, countries that are termed as having high risk of COVID and are returning to the UK, must deposit £1,750 for both hotel quarantine and three tests. £1,750. This is the United Kingdom for their citizens. It is not a profiteering mindset. They want to make sure that okay. the few who want to endanger the many are stopped from doing that. So it is not a profiteering mindset. And I'm hopeful that the transport minister, if asked, would share a, a lot of Fair uh, enough. information. Thank you so much, Honorable Okoboy. Thank you very much, Honorable Okojatua Blackwa. We have a, a few minutes to wrap up. We'll bring you highlights from the vetting as well. This is The Point of View. Stay with us. Using new sunlight two in one. It gives you burst, after burst, after burst of long lasting freshness. New sunlight two in one for burst, after burst of long lasting freshness. 
Everything seems to get a little more expensive this time of the year. But keeping your family entertained doesn't have to. <laughs> now you can get a GoTV decoder with one month of GoTV Plus for the new low price of 89 CDs. That's 24-7 access to your favorite local stars. The biggest names in the game, international movies, and plenty to keep the kids busy. It's a deal you can't afford to miss, so don't delay. Get the limited time offer today. Go TV. Love it. Welcome back to The Point of View. Uh, I have Philip Ashon joining me to get through the vetting quickly. But here are a few comments. The machine Frontier is providing is readily available on the market and cheaper than the PCR machine Noguchi uses. The government could easily have bought the machine and provided personnel to drastically reduce the cost. Currently, there are private facilities in Ghana with the same machine that charge less than 200 cities. This is somebody's comment. Bernard, an entity as contemplated by the PPA as amended by Act 914, um, could be a person, individual, or corporate entity, as declared by the Minister of Finance. So it need not be a company or agency, but could be a single person. This is Malam Amadou. And there are lots of questions. Let's just summarize what we've done in vetting today. So, mm -hmm. Philip, thank you for joining us. Philip Ashong, Head of Digital Media. Um, what, what happened in Parliament for vetting today? So uh, we had um, two personalities um, at the vetting today, and one of them happened to be Adrasa, for she so far has clogged the shortest time in terms of the vetting. Wow. And so we put out um, these five major five top points, questions um, that were posted, where some of the issues that she talked about. First, um, on a, she, was, she indicated she was unaware of the procurement process. Oh, we just discussed. Exactly. Um, she talked about criminality of LGBT um, not, not being negotiable. It's trending. Giddy, 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 and giddy. it's trending all over the place. We have the video actually on our social media platforms for okay. um, viewers to get access to. She talked about um, promises to ensure passage of affirmative and aging bills. She also talked about promises to see the full implementation of the Domestic Violence Act. And then she also talked about promises to deal with activities of which comes if approved. She, for example, talked about rebranding. Rebranding which comes. Which, comes. which, which has also <laughs> um, gotten wow. a lot of people talking. So, so these are her big five. Who, who, else did you, who, who else did you have? Uh, who else came on the vetting today? Um, I think we, we had... Um, Ignatius Bafwe. Ignat yes, and we have all of that today. As, as well um, in terms of the vetting. So we just wanted to show um, viewers some of the five things that were spoken about today. So he was also um, up um, at the he vetting. He says he's created three million jobs. And that is hey. um, the big issue of three contention. Million. He indicated that he will bring in the details wow. to the members of parliament before close of day. I don't know if he's done that, but it'll be interesting to see where exactly wow. those jobs have been distributed to and who exactly has those jobs. The second issue that he spoke about, for example, of one of the other issues was banking sector crisis, which led to about 3,000 job losses. So he gave the final figure. Exactly. And um, it, it was important. Did he say whether it was direct or indirect? Because there are a lot of people who know that. I think the figure is bigger. It is bigger, Probably. but I think obviously maybe these are direct jobs. These are direct jobs because the other the other side of the of the story will be a completely different issue altogether. Um, something you spoke about as well: national plan developed to combat child labor, um, and then of course plans underway to lift the ban on private recruitment agencies um, to Gulf states, which mm. has been that a issue, issue kept coming up um, for quite a while. He mm -hmm. also debunked protocol in government sector employment. Seriously, I mean, there's no protocol. If if he says so, but it, I mean. <laughs> the, it's, it's something that it's common knowledge that happens, but the so uh, minister he, designates. Did you do you have a summary for his um, uh, presentation? If yes, you could just we do show have me. a summary for his presentation as to how he performed. Um, okay, in, in there. So we have um, that here. So as we've been doing over the last couple of weeks, he spent three hours and sixteen minutes. Um, said, I just have his, to spend the shortest time. She spent about fifty-eight minutes, less than an hour. Less than an hour. Wow. So she holds the record for the least time spent. Um, of course, the majority asked about um, twelve questions. The minority had forty-seven questions for the minister designated key issues, key issues employment, employment, unemployment, data, unfair labor, uh, discrimination, and then all. There of was that. a question about maternity leave and paternity leave as well. I'm sure it came in. But it was it, one of the things that, and we, we when you get onto our social media platforms, you realize that with Madame Adwa Safo, one thing you would find very interesting that when it comes to the questions by the majority, we had 
almost all of them asking just one, 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 one question. question. And so when you look at the infographic, you would realize wow. how interesting that was. So but we can find that online. Online, I'm yes, informed indeed. that Chairman Sambonsu had a shorter vetting than Ajua Safo. And don't forget they were, right. Ajua Safo was Chairman Sambonsu's deputy. deputy. So it looks like it's... For the two of for them, the, they, two, the they leadership had a, of parliament had a soft hand, um, yeah. you know. Break this down for me. So the question areas that were posed to the Labour Relations Minister in Employment, of course, a uh, majority of them had to do with, of course, others. But the biggest issues were employment and unemployment data, unfair labour practices as well. Child, Child labour came up prominently during his vetting. The issue of job creation opportunities also came up. Mm. Payroll fraud also came up uh, prominently and then irregular migration was also one of the issues. Okay, let's let's go up. to yesterday. Who did we have? We had Ambrose Derry and Dambo the Dam day before. Exactly. Minister for uh, local government. government. Two hours. Two hours, 41 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, among the key issues, SAL was one of the big issues, obviously, because of the decentralization and everything that went on. Decentralization also came up. Sanitation. Lots of issues. So sanitation. The, the, the breakdown is, the breakdown is right here. Of, um, so you have sanitation, election of MMDCEs and assembly members, which has been a running issue for quite a while now. Ghana first contractors. So know, many questions for, and, for, and, for and all that. Land use and spatial planning, which, of course, has come up on, 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 on for discussion on radio. And rural urban migration also came up during... During his Let me just thing. quickly look at uh, Ambrose Derry. So you have Ambrose Derry, the four interior hours. minister designate, four hours. Obviously, issues having to do with security were prime, you know, for mm. um, during his, his vetting. So state of prisons and officers' welfare um, took the lead. Prisons, with, almost 20%. With police, 19.4%. Police, 9.7%. But security... Security issues, treatment. like I said, and of course, the state of affairs of the police. Okay, actually, so you have police salary and then police and welfare. And the police welfare. Okay. So um, those were the segmentation of the issues. And as you can see there, as usual, as we've seen all throughout the vetting Minority process, asks more questions. Asks more questions for as hours. against majority. Amazing stuff. Where can we get more information? So on all this? of this is available across our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, Twitter, on Instagram, but simply search for the hashtag GH vetting and you'll get access to all of this and so much Amazing more, stuff. including the videos as well. Superb, Philip Kofi Ashong, head of digital media. We're trying to help you to follow this. Is a very important process the approval of the nominees by the president. Earlier on, we had MP for not Okujatwa Blackwa, a member of the appointments committee, and of course, former MP for the Zukuku, former deputy health minister Bernardo Koboy, debating. The Frontiers Health. Okujato says is going to ask questions, even if he, <laughs> whoever comes is going to ask. So watch out. We have the vetting live on radio and television as well. My name is Bernard Avale. Philip, thank you very much. Stay with CCTV. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.